Hi guys, welcome to the Soix part review and today I want to present two color stocks and two black and white stocks and let me start with the color stocks. So let's start with Aqua Ultra 50. I shot with uh, my Moskva 5 camera. That's the old folding camera 6x9 format and it still has the uh, rangefinder play so I cannot be uh, sure about the focusing and since it's like 105 millimeter uh, lens uh, yeah focusing precision is a must but I mean uh, it's not what I get with this camera and uh, this roll I actually tested and then I re-roll it back again and then I kept it like this uh, wrapped in a foil in my fridge maybe not the best way to keep ex uh, an expired film but it worked so uh, I think given that this film is so slow, it's 50 ISO, it uh, it really uh, kept its properties up to the day I shot it. And I really like the colors. Uh, they are not so punchy, I would say. I really like how green works uh, on the film. And uh, actually, I, I, I took this camera with me like and I... Uh, with one thought in mind, I thought like, I'm gonna shoot this roll like today. like. In, in a matter of three hours, let's say. And I wasn't going to keep any of those. So let's say I I thought, okay, it's, if it's like a total failure, like, okay, trash it. But actually I got some pictures I really like. Uh, the problem is that it was, given that the, the day was pretty sunny, but uh, I had to overexpose it one stop. So I had to shoot uh, at ISO 25 and um, with the uh, focal lens of uh, 100 millimeters, uh, my shutter speed should be around 100, uh, 1, 1, 1, 25 hundredths of a second. But I couldn't afford this because uh, these, the fastest, uh, sh let's say, aperture is 3.5, uh, so which kind of doesn't cut it in a combination of this exposure triangle. So. I sometimes went as low as 1 30th of a second, so my pictures are a little bit shaky and you can see it. Um, but still, I mean, sometimes it's not about like a really like a sharpness of the picture, but about the subject and uh, regarding the subject, I like pretty much all of them. And this camera gives you eight uh, exposures, uh, six by nine. And uh, yeah, I really like this film and I have like a second roll and I definitely keep it for uh, later use. Next one, let's talk about Scotch 100. So uh, back in the day when film was a thing, so everyone would like to have its own film uh, in production. So, uh, and sometimes uh, like some brands like Scotch, for example, uh, would call some other film manufacturers and buy like a white label solution. And as far as I know, Scotch actually um, gave a call to Ferrania, uh, an Italian company. And so, and I, <laughs> so actually I wanted to buy E6 film, but I once I actually won the slot on eBay, I realized that it's like a color negative film, but uh, I thought, okay, uh, why not? So I just loaded this roll of uh, film in my, uh, go to 35 millimeter camera which is Zenit. Uh, it's maybe not the best 35 millimeter camera. It's fully manual which is okay but uh, it has some problems with light leaks and um, uh, I gotta buy a new 35 millimeter camera if I want to shoot more 35 millimeter. But as you can see uh, it has some problems with colors. So there are color shifts and um, Especially in the difficult lighting conditions, especially in the shadows, uh, as it uh, like a general situation with expired film. So in shadows, like the shadows are really muddy and you especially can see it on a color film and uh, especially like brown tones and something like that tend to deteriorate like really uh, uh, quickly and then it produces not so uh, interesting results. But um, I mean, uh, on other situation, other shots where there was uh, a, enough sunlight, uh, colors are in place. Uh, I again uh, overexposed it on one stop, so I shoot it as uh, uh, 50 ISO. And uh, yeah, I, I'm actually pretty amazed how that, uh, let's say, a no-name film 
performed. So yeah, I have two more also roles of this film. I'm not sure I'm gonna keep it, but yeah, we'll see. Because 35 millimeter is convenient when you go out uh, with your family, um, and uh, yeah, it's just nice to have it uh, in a stash for those occasions. So uh, next one gonna be Ilford HP5. It's like a really old one, so it's uh, a 1979, uh, and it's a fast film, so it's 400 ISO. So I expected it to be uh, really a low performer in this regard, uh, but anyways, I took it uh, for a spin um, and I shot it. And when I developed it, I was like, okay, so. This is like a no-go, so yeah, film was really old, it's like it's fogging all over the, the, the film and stuff like that. I was like, well, oh, okay, so I actually even posted a picture on my Instagram saying it's like a newspaper uh, filter for of Instagram. Uh, and then I just, left, uh, you know, uh, put it in my uh, binder and that was it. Um, but then I shot the next roll, which is Ilford FP4, and it's pretty sh like fresh film, 1995, and it's like much slower, so it's 124, uh, 25 ISO. But the result was again not satisfying, and it's like again this uh, the same old story that I saw with HP5. Uh, and I was so frustrated. I was like, man, I'm I'm not gonna be shooting 35 millimeter film again. It's like an I'm not gonna be shooting like like so expired film, like so expired film, uh, like 79, it's like, like FP4, I shot like some portraits of my colleagues and it was like really a painful experience for me to present these photos. Um, but, uh, but then I started thinking, so wait a minute, that actually looks like a fixer exhaustion to me. And then I got a new bottle of a fixer and I mixed a, a solution and I decided to refix it. <laughs> and actually that that helped so as you can see here like uh, this side by side comparison of uh, these two portraits uh, of a colleague of mine is like it really makes a difference so all this noise and all this fogging like gone so it's like it's clear photograph and it's pretty much something that I would actually expect from uh, this expired film to, to be like that. So of course it's not like a fresh FP4 would would perform, but uh, like, come on. So, and then I also refixed uh, my HP5 uh, photographs and the results are much, much, much better. Well, I mean, you can expect that, right? So um, what is the morale of the story could be, um, huh, I would say, don't be quick on judgment. So sometimes uh, if you should film and uh, there is a, a, an error, most probably it's your mistake. Uh, so in this uh, regard, it was me uh, really, um, uh, how to say, uh, not willing to buy a new, uh, new bottle of fixer. Uh, so I just like, pushed the, the solution I had really far and that actually um, um, wasn't that good for me and for, for my experience and then I had this uh, uh, soul searching like should I be shooting 35 millimeter film, should I be shoot, shooting like expired film and uh, should I be uh, I would say proposing um, to shoot portraits for colleagues of mine and like people I don't really know well as like my family, but someone, someone other. So yeah, and the lessons learned. So I'm gonna be keeping my uh, chemicals fresh, uh, especially that uh, uh, goes for uh, color uh, chemicals, but um, yeah, for a black and white, at least fixer, you should be keeping your eye on your, uh, chemicals. So that's pretty much everything I got to say today, guys. Um, yeah, I actually reloaded the rest of the FP4 in my Zenith, so I'm gonna be shooting this film again uh, after I discovered that that was my fault and not the film's fault and whatever fault. So yeah, um, yeah, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and I see you next time.